has a better understanding of free speech as a concept than Ayan Hirsi Ali. Ayan was born a girl in a Muslim world, in Somalia. She grew up without the freedoms that we in this room take for granted. She grew up knowing that as a girl, she was a second-class citizen, and that there was a large range of subjects about which she should not speak, questions she should not answer. And when she raised questions that her grandmother or her mother did not like her to raise, they would hit her. It was a long and winding road that led my wife from Somalia by way of Saudi Arabia and Kenya to the Netherlands, where she sought asylum mainly in order to escape an arranged marriage that her father had set up for her. In the Netherlands, Ayan encountered for the first time at the University of Leiden some of the great thinkers of the Enlightenment and of the 19th and 20th centuries, including Hayek, but also the great 18th century thinkers, David Hume, Adam Smith. When she encountered for the first time the notion of individual freedom, the idea of the equality of the sexes, the possibility of critical thinking about everything. Yes, even about religion. She was enraptured. Some of you have had a tiring day. And it's tempting in a lecture hall to nod off, like the gentleman in the green shirt. But the reason that you are succumbing to that temptation is that you take freedom for granted. Nobody ever hit you, struck you in the face for questioning, for example, the sanctity of the words of the Prophet Muhammad. But my wife dared to be free. She dared to suggest, as a young politician, in the wake of the 9-11 attacks, still the single greatest act of mass slaughter in modern American history, that there might be a connection between the terrorism being perpetrated by groups like Al-Qaeda and Islam itself. And for making that connection, for raising that question, my wife found herself threatened not just with blows to the head, but with death threats. In 2004, her friend Theo van Gogh, with whom she was collaborating to make a film about the relationship between Islam and women's rights, was murdered, shot and stabbed to death in the streets of Amsterdam as he rode home on his bicycle. And his murderer 
an Islamic extremist, pinned a note to his body, and on that note, he said that Ayan would be next. From then on, Ayan had to live with recurrent threats to her life. She learned that free speech is not, after all, free. And that the protections that had been promised to her by those who encouraged her in her political career in the Netherlands were not unconditional and were not permanent. Today, the cost of free speech, if you're interested, the cost, in other words, of the security that you have to pay for to ensure that you do not suffer the fate of Stéphane Charbonnier, editor of Charlie Hebdo, is around a million dollars a year. That's what free speech turns out to cost. I tell you all this because it's so different from my own story. <laughs>